everybody. Thank you for coming. Yeah, uh, let's get started. Folks want to grab seats. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Joe Robinson. I'm the organizer of Designers and Geeks. Um, very excited about the event tonight. Um, thank you all. Just a quick show of hands. Um, how many folks are here for the first time? First Designers and Geeks. Wow, that's awesome. So fantastic. Um, well, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun running the event, so hope you all enjoy it. Enjoy the, the pizza, the beer, all that stuff. Um, speaking of, um, just want to say a quick thank you to Yelp for hosting the event. They also provide the, the food and drinks, so thank you. Let me introduce uh, Eric from Yelp. Hey, I'm going to talk about the beer in my hand. Is that okay? Um, thanks for coming, fans of Designers and Geeks. So uh, my name is Eric Singley. I head up the consumer and mobile product team here. Um, like everybody in the Bay Area, Yelp is hiring for product managers and designers. So if you want to join us, we have good times, uh, let me know. Um, we've also got some other folks in these nice red track jackets that you can talk to. Or just check out uh, yelp.com slash careers. Have a good time. Thank you. Another thank you for them. Um, so uh, we are, uh, I'm I've been trying for the last couple of times to get a hashtag going for this uh, DGSF. So if you want to tweet, uh, please tweet there, um, tweet whatever you want, DGSF, Designers and Geeks SF, so, which is speaking to my global uh, expansion plans. No, just kidding. <laughs> Um, so cool. So uh, very excited for tonight's talk. Uh, we have Wells Riley um, uh, talking about hacking design. Wells is, um, I first encountered his work um, probably a few months ago, and many of you did probably as well on Hacker News. Um, he did a little thing called uh, Startups, This Is How Design Works, and it gave a lot of tips and stats and things like that about um, designing user experience and things like that. Um, he's got some interesting stories about it. It went viral um, and uh, has just been an interesting thing for him. Uh, but I'll, I'll let him talk about that. Uh, we were facing a bit of a design challenge trying to relate this toothpick to his talk, um, which wasn't intentional. It was something that I picked and um, has nothing to do with his talk. But it's sort of interesting because uh, it's a Japanese toothpick that you can sort of break off the end and create a little stand for, which is, I think, an interesting way of uh, hacking design. So. Um, if you take nothing else away from tonight, know that you can break off the end of one of these toothpicks and use it as a stand. So um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Wells. Um, just one note, um, we have a segment after his uh, talk called Shout Outs, where I'll invite people up to um, basically give a shout out about something that you want to network on. Um, so be thinking about that. Um, you'll have some time to uh, come up and grab the microphone. But thanks, everybody. Thanks. Hey everybody, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, the toothpick thing's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully you'll learn a little bit more than just uh, break a toothpick apart and use it as a stand. So um, today I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about hacking design. Um, so my background, um, I'm the product designer at Kicksend, which means that I spend a lot of time uh, thinking about products, creating mock-ups, doing UI, UX, um, also doing a lot of like little menial stuff that you do in a startup like really awesome business cards and stuff. So um, it's a really great time. Um, I started doing design a long time ago. Um, I got my first like copy of Photoshop, I think when I was in middle school, uh, super legit. And um, yeah, definitely paid for it. And uh, <laughs> I just kind of went from there. Um, I, I started learning a little bit about HTML uh, in school during an after school program. And it was really awesome for me. Uh, like my parents are totally non-technical, and to be able to just type stuff on the computer and have it show up in the browser, like even just like changing a color or putting text like inside of that little window, it's just there's no like physical analog for that. And as like a middle school kid who like doesn't even have a computer at home, like this is like the coolest thing. And it was really awesome to sort of take the design stuff and start applying it to the web. And I started a company with my friend uh, just doing web design. And we did uh, like, you know, really tiny websites for bands and like local like real estate firms and stuff. Um, and then that kind of transferred over to when I went to college. Um, I went to Northeastern University up in Boston. And it was really amazing to 
like sort of go from knowing the tools and thinking I'm, I was a designer to actually becoming a designer and learning all of the stuff that you don't learn when you don't go to school. And um, it was really helpful to my business. And somewhere along the line, I learned about this thing called uh, startups and entrepreneurs. And as a designer, I just didn't have any, any clue what that was. We were all like in our own building on like the back end of campus. And it totally changed the way I think about my work and uh, sort of the industry as a whole. Um, instead of just making like front ends, like static websites, I was actually like thinking about a business and uh, iterating and all of these different things that you do kind of as an engineers or as business people. And I pivoted my business from doing these websites to doing like UI, UX, branding uh, for startups. And that failed catastrophically. Um, yeah, we kind of, so I learned a lot from that and it kind of drove me out here to uh, actually work with a startup really closely and understand not from a consultant's point of view, but from like a real like employee's point of view, uh, how to work with a product, how to own the product and, um, you know, how to be a part of that startup process. Um, I'm a firm believer in the idea of the designer founder. Um, there's a lot of people in the city who are. Uh, the Designer Fund is one organization that really pushes hard on this and like really trying to get uh, designers to start their own companies or to co-found their companies. And that's something I really believe that is just gonna take off in the next couple of years. And instead of being like the technical co-founder, you're gonna have the technical co-founder and the designer co-founder. Um, but for now, I know there's a lot of companies that that's just not feasible, or you're not interested in that, or you're just not ready. Um, if Yelp is like trying to beg for designers, you know that it's really hard to find a designer. And they're in super high demand. I could have never known this five years ago, but like they just get snapped up like that. So I'm just gonna share some tips that I've learned, uh, both from working by myself and from going to school, that uh, if you're not a designer, if you're not design oriented, um, can really help you figure out some of the design problems in your company and ultimately end up with a better early stage product. So the first question is why design? Uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, what are your goals? Who are your customers? Um, like at Kicksend, for example, uh, we do super easy photo sharing. You can share like full albums of photos uh, to anyone on any device. And to do that for non-technical people, which is our target market, is really hard to do. Um, like iPhoto is supposed to be easy, uh, PhotoStream is supposed to be really easy, but like I have iOS 6, I can't even find photo stream, like, shared photo streams on my phone. I don't know if it's not there yet or if it's just super hard to use, but if a designer can't do it, my parents who have never really used computers before definitely can't do it. So at Kicksend, I'm kind of designing for my parents. Um, and it really helps frame the design work that I'm doing. And it helps me understand kind of at every stage, like, is this something that my mom would be able to figure out? Or when I design a screen for the, like, our iPhone app, it's like, is this gonna make any sense at all? And we end up doing a lot of different stuff to make sure that we're meeting those requirements. Um, design is mostly to, made to convey like ideas, actions, or information. Uh, a company like Visually, like their entire business is uh, taking really complex sets of data and making them digestible, understandable, and uh, easy to manipulate like in an interactive environment. And design is also really cool because you can also enforce behavioral changes. Uh, think about a company like Foursquare or Gowalla um, saying, hey, you should tell everyone in the world where you are right now. And that's not something that we did five years ago. That's kind of weird and creepy. And they were able to design their brand and their, pro their, uh, their product around this totally kind of little scary idea and make it less scary. And now like Facebook has adopted it and Path and all these other companies that basically demands that you tell them where you are. And uh, a company like, um, like LinkedIn, they put a little bar on the side, have you guys ever seen that? Where it shows you the profile completeness so you end up giving them extra personal information to get that bar to creep up just a little <laughs> higher. And mine is at 100% because they've tricked me into giving them like every like little club that I was a part of in high school. Like 
you guys don't care about that stuff. Like even like potential employers or uh, like my, my parents don't care about those things. But for some reason, they get me to do that. And it's really cool that they can do that through design. Um, so one of the most important things that I've found is hierarchy. And it's the kind of thing where if I'm working on a project and uh, I'm doing like a screen or I'm writing stuff on the, on the whiteboard um, and I'm totally stuck and I just like, I don't know where to go from here. And I hit this problem really recently while we're working on the new Kicksend. And I just sat there like, what the hell am I gonna do? Like, am I even cut out to do this? And this was one of those things that I learned in school that was like year two, and we spent six months doing it, and it really works. Um, if you can figure out how to do it the right way, and if you can figure out how to optimize for this, um, it totally makes the design process, like from the very beginning, really simple. Uh, the idea is that you try to focus on what's the most important and sort of prioritize things to show people like, this is what you're supposed to do first, this is what you're supposed to do next, uh, this is what you're supposed to focus on. And uh, have you guys ever heard of like the T-shape the model in, in web browsing where like someone will read the first couple lines in Google and then like by the time they reach the bottom of the page, they're not even reading a single word, they're just looking at like the first character. Um, figuring out how to optimize for how users perceive things. Um, I always find myself asking like, what's the most important thing here? So if we're trying to share photos, like what is the most important thing? the photos, like that's the whole reason that we're doing this business. So we make the photos front and center and we don't clutter them with excess information that you don't need. And um, try to think about like what your value proposition is, like what are you trying to sell to the user, what are you trying to help them to do? And do that, don't do like the extra stuff, like we don't do check-ins and we don't do like likes because it just gets in the way. So you know, you can have really high complexity but you can make it feel really simple uh, just by optimizing for what really works. Um, it's a really big deal, and this is like half of my job, is just figuring out what's important and making sure that the design reflects the user's expectations and the company's priorities. Um, sketching. I used to hate sketching. In school, they told us you have to sketch. Every day, we had a sketchbook. And they told us to fill it up, and then every two weeks we would do a sketchbook review. And what would happen is all of my classmates and I, we would not sketch for two weeks. And then the day before, we'd fill it with stuff that was like fake sketches, just so we could get a passing grade in the class. And I took an animation course, and the professor said, you have to sketch. And we still thought it was stupid, and we didn't like it. Um, we thought, since like, I'm a really bad drawer, I'm not an artist, I'm a designer. And my handwriting sucks. Like, it's really, really bad. Um, no one can read it. Sometimes I can't even read it. And I felt that because of that, I would be a bad sketcher. Because you look on Dribbble and you see these amazing, like, these are those guys that make, like, the pixel perfect icons with pencil. Like, it's just, it's not fair. And they get tons of likes, and I don't. And so I hated sketching. And then I think right after school, I don't know why this always happens, but it just clicked. And I realized why it was so important. And I realized that um, by doing sketches, um, it would kind of make me look like this, which is really cool. But like, these are all my sketchbooks. Sorry, those are not all of my sketchbooks. That's about three quarters of them. There's one of them that I can't show you because they're secret stuff. And there's another that's at home. And there's another that's in my bag over there that I didn't take out. Um, sketching is a really great way to get ideas just flowing without committing to Photoshop without even committing to a program like Balsamic Mockups. Uh, making anything that's more high fidelity than just like a whiteboard marker that you can easily erase if you feel stupid about what you've just done. Um, it really helps vet ideas really quickly and it just, it makes your work better because you go back and you look at your sketches three weeks later and you're like, wow, that is so stupid. Like, how are we thinking that way? Um, but you have to start there in order to get to the next step. And if you're doing stuff in Photoshop, or even if you're doing stuff in code and like just doing really quick CSS, uh, HTML uh, iterations that way, um, you're still kind of committing to things. And with a whiteboard, you can't really commit to anything because it's a big fat marker on a, on a whiteboard that you have to erase when you're done because someone else wants to use it. Um, so it really 
kind of helps. And you can kind of see up here, like, that secret kicks in 3.0 stuff. Really? Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, don't tell my boss, anyway. And uh, like, it's really low fidelity. You can see over on the side, I'm just writing stuff. And a lot of times when I sketch, I'm not even uh, drawing things like this at all. It's all just uh, like drawing lines between words, uh, connecting different pages together. And that stuff really helps. Um, it helps you understand the organization. Uh, some people do like mind maps and stuff. But even before you start drawing or even start designing, you have to do this stuff first. And this is probably the most important part of design that I do, period. Uh, design less. And this doesn't mean less is more, because that's totally bullshit. Uh, less is less. It's not more. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to do this. You, you'd think like designers talk about white space or like making the logo smaller without getting in trouble. Um, this is really, really, really hard to do. Um, I think about it every day that I'm in Photoshop, and it's still hard for me to do. And it hurts, too. Uh, when you make something and you realize that it's wrong and that there's just too much going on or there's too much focus, uh, back to the hierarchy stuff. And it's just like there's this guy, uh, Dieter Rams, and he came up with these 10 principles of design. And along with that, he kind of had this motto when he was working with Braun back in uh, the 1960s and 70s, uh, less but better. So. Take something, remove as much as you can, but stay true to the product uh, and make it better by just the sheer simplicity of it. Um, there's a company I always talk about, um, Bump, the iPhone app and the, the Android app. Um, they, they did this amazingly. Like, it's a perfect case study for this. Like, uh, they had this really simple product. All you do is bump the phones together, and magically you get contact information. I still don't even know how it works. It's still magic to me. But they released 2.0 of that product. And they had photo sharing, contact sharing, location sharing, app sharing. Uh, you get the idea. And no one used any of that stuff. It all just got in the way. And it ended up being that uh, you'd bump the two phones together, and it would bug you, like, oh, you need to do all this stuff. And you just didn't want to use it at all. Um, but then they made a new version. And they stripped all that stuff out. And they just stuck to sharing contact information. And I think they did sharing photos as well. That's so cool. Like, they got rid of all that extra stuff, and they just stayed true to the product, and it worked. And if you look at like, screens of it, or if you are actually a user, um, it's really amazingly simple. And I think it took them going too far in terms of complexity to learn how important this kind of simplicity stuff is. Um, the real challenge, uh, especially with visual design, is just to remove as much as you can. Uh, they talk a lot about like not having boxes or borders and stuff. Um, even going beyond that, like if you're uh, if you're drawing or doing sketches or if you're actually doing high fidelity stuff, uh, take a look at what you're doing and figure out how much you can remove. Like, is there copy that doesn't have to be there? Um, are there icons or navigation items that don't have to be there? Um, it's just amazing to look at something when you're done and realize how cool it is because it just it just feels so right because that like there isn't that extra bar of like icons or there isn't a map where it doesn't need to be. Google's a really good example of this and uh, people traditionally compare Google to Yahoo because it makes a really like more loud point. Uh, Yahoo's that like you know super like links everywhere, super destination y kind of thing. But it's kind of comparing apples and oranges. So I like to compare uh, Google to Bing, because they both kind of do the same thing. Um, Google, search, Bing, search, and they got the links at the top that take you to the other uh, like Google or Microsoft assets. Um, so we can't really say too much about Google. Like, what, what, do we, what do they want us to do? They want us to search. And they've got their logo. And what does Bing want us to do? They want us to search and look at sheep, apparently. Um, I don't care about sheep at all. Um, but this is a, a perfect example of like just you know, removing the excess, making it simple. Because it's OK to look like Google, because it's, it's not like they're looking like Google. They're just doing white space. I mean, look at all of Microsoft's new stuff. Like, do you guys see the new Microsoft logo today? Oh, god. 
Um, why can't they do that here, like just, like just white space? Uh, it feels so much better, so much truer, and you don't have to look at sheep. Um, this one I feel is really obvious in a really non-obvious way. Uh, designers don't like to talk about iteration. It's like, if you, if you mention it, like if, uh, if you talk to a consultant or if you talk to a freelancer, they're either going to like, try to steer you away from doing this or they're gonna have dollar signs in their eyes because they know that they can milk so much money out of you for doing multiple things. Um, but this is actually what caused my business in uh, high school and college to totally fail. Because with startups, I mean, you engineers, you know this. Like, you don't ship code and then say, okay, we're done, we're gonna go get stakes. Um, you keep doing, you keep making it better. Um, it's not like the, the 1980s where you ship like Super Mario Brothers and if there's a problem, like, you don't ship out replacement cartridges to everybody, it's just, it's broken forever. Uh, with, the, with the web, you can push something to Heroku in like two minutes. Um, with design, a lot of designers, especially in agencies, like to just reach like the completion. Like they complete the contract, they give you the deliverables, they use all of those words, and they're done. And saying that a design is done sounds silly, because uh, we know that design is never done, just like code is never done. But um, the problem with my consultancy is that we couldn't stay around and work with these products after we were done. Like it just wasn't financially viable, and we didn't really want to. Like we just wanted to get our check and leave and move on to the next thing. And it's like a dirty secret, and I really like being able to do this now that I work at a startup full time. Um, design should be able to grow with your company. Um, like I said, I believe that design should be at the ground level. It should be day one stuff. And it doesn't mean that it has to be perfect day one. Uh, the companies that actually do make things perfect day one are typically the most like, rigid companies in the world because everything is designed and like that, that's there and that's there. And if you make a new feature or if you remove a feature or if you move things around or A-B test, like what are you gonna do? Break the whole thing? Um, so making things really simple and flexible and easy to change uh, that kind of goes back to the, the, the less is better thing. Uh, because if you do less and if you make it a lot simpler, it's easy to add stuff later. It's easy to iterate, it's easy to A-B test. And A-B testing design is typically pretty hard to do. But like at Kicksend, we make it really easy because everything, like we don't make t image text and we don't have really hairy assets and stuff. So we can just like throw up something that, that's different and see how it works and just go from there. And it's probably the most powerful thing that we do, or the most powerful thing I do there, because like Kicksend's, like if you guys download it today, it sucks. Please just don't, like wait until you hear the announcement on, on TechCrunch that we have the new one, because uh, it's really that bad. Um, I got there three months ago and redesigned the whole thing in four days, because we were like shipping for a major release that I couldn't change. And it's, uh, it's just really, really bad. But I thought it was great when I first did it. Like, it was amazing. And everybody else thought it was amazing. And our investors thought it was really, you know, super. Um, but I've learned since then. Like, I understand the company. I understand the, the customer. Uh, we've kind of shifted the way that we think about it. And if I had designed it in such a way that was completely inflexible, like, what are we going to do? Just, like, start over? Starting over sucks. Engineers hate starting over. Unless they're new. They love starting over when they're new. But um, it's really um, super great to be able to just uh, iterate on stuff and, and just like just as fast as the engineers are doing it. Like engineers like to talk about like ship every day um, and design not really ship every day. Ship every like two weeks. Uh, I like to ship every day because it makes my work a lot more fun and it makes it really easy to make awesome stuff after trying a lot of different things. God is in the details. Uh, this is something that one of, someone that I very much respect keep telling me, and I didn't have any idea what he was talking about. Like, I got it, like, okay, details are important, but why was he, why would he say this every time I'd show him something? And it's like, he literally wrote the book on typography, and just like with sketching, after, after school, I kind of understood what this meant. Um, it's really easy to screw something up with really tiny details. Uh, have you ever gotten like an email mailing list and like someone 
spelled, used, like they used the wrong your. And you just look at it and you're like, what idiot wrote this? Like, are they in preschool? And it's not like you're hating on the person that wrote it. You, you'll never know who wrote it, but it kind of breaks the illusion in your mind. It's like uh, watching TV and someone on TV says, we're on TV. And then you realize, that's right, I'm watching TV and these people aren't real. Uh, it, it breaks the illusion and it's really important when you're designing something that you, know, you want something that your users are going to trust. You want something that people are going to believe is well made. And design is the first, like, they're like the marines of well made things. Like if it's not well designed, it probably doesn't work very well. And even if it does, you won't think it does. Um, like stuff like error states, like how often, like on Windows, you get like error code 417932-1x. What does that even, what does that mean? Uh, in Windows 8, they're changing it to be a little bit more friendly, and they're thinking about these things. Uh, even Apple is guilty of it, like in iTunes. It's just terrible. Um, save states. Uh, this is another problem in Kicksend. Uh, I was using it a couple of days ago. I went to the, to, uh, the Grand Canyon, and I was using it to send photos that I took to my team. And I checked off all the photos that I wanted, and I hit send, and the app crashed, because I was using the beta version. And I was so pissed that I almost deleted the app before I realized that I worked there. <laughs> <laughs> because as a, as a product designer, I kind of have to force myself to be really cranky and uh, immature as a user, because users aren't going to give you a second chance. If something breaks, if something doesn't work, like. Everybody complains about the Facebook mobile app because it's super slow. And they ended up having to rewrite the whole thing from scratch, even though it was a technological like HTML5 marvel. Uh, it didn't work. It broke the illusion. And with Kicksend, one of the big things that we're going to be doing is save states. So anytime a user leaves the app, quits the app, the app fails them, uh, the internet connection isn't working, whatever, uh, we're going to save exactly where they were and what they did so that when you go back into it and it crashed, it just shows you all those photos that you just ticked off because it's really annoying to have to do that a second time. And to this day, I still haven't sent my team vacation photos because I refuse, like in my mind, to do that again because it's so much effort as a user to like, do all those little things. Um, details can help make things feel deceptively good. Um, there's products, I know you guys have seen them, uh, where like, you feel like it's really well made, but really it's kind of crappy. Um, when I, I started a, like a little startup on the side, uh, when I first learned about entrepreneurship and did this entrepreneurship club at Northeastern. And it was me and an engineer and like some other guy doing business stuff. And we had a really great logo that I designed, uh, really nice business cards with like the rounded edges, you know, really expensive. Um, we had a, a landing page with uh, an email sign up, and this was kind of before Launch Rock started. And Everyone that we met thought that we were really far along, and when we told them we were students, they didn't even believe us. Uh, we spoke to investors, and they thought that we had already received funding. Um, but on the back end, we hadn't really done anything because we didn't know how to do it. So we had, I think, a uh, sign-up form like to put in your credit card information, and we had a dashboard. And that was the front end. We didn't have the back end. Uh, that didn't exist. <laughs> and we ended up going in to meet with an investor like for real money, like check signing. And our lead engineer had quit because he thought it was stupid. And the other guy and I were just like, it was six months of hustling and going to events. And it just, like, we were just so tired. We, we couldn't do anything. Um, but it was late at night when this happened. And, and the investor meeting was in the morning. And we couldn't call him and tell him that we, we couldn't go. It was way too late. So we we'd go down to Providence, Rhode Island. And we meet with this guy at like 7 AM. And we just sit down at the table and we're like, so we don't have anything. Uh, sorry. And he was like blown away, first of all, that it was, there was nothing behind it. And he's like, surely there's something. I'm like, no, we just had really great like, illusion on the front that uh, you know, everything was really in order and everything was going OK. And like, don't do that ever. That's really bad. I learned my lesson. But it's a testament to the details and like, uh, making things feel really well made, even though maybe they're not. Um, sorry, the takeaway here is if you have something that's really well made, focus on the design because that can really help people, like, it can drive it home that, like, this is really great. Uh, like, Apple products do this really well. Like, 
Uh, I upgraded the mountain lion and it's still kind of flaky. But look at that computer. Oh, it's so thin and beautiful. Like, those details really matter. Um, so, you know, make sure that when you're designing things, it, it feels right. Because if, if like, your copy is wrong or uh, if, like, there's this little break in the app or, like, you don't have a 404 page that works, it breaks that illusion. Um, so, maybe the reason you guys are here, I made this. It's called Startups this is How Design Works. Um, originally, I was going to do a, a Techstars, uh, I guess, class, they call them classes. Uh, I was going to be like the design in residence, uh, teach these companies that design is a core concept of startups. So I met with some of the most prolific designers in the world. I don't know how I was able to contact them. Uh, talked to some startups about what design means to them. And I collected all this information. I was talking to Zarly, Square, Facebook, you know, that kind of caliber of company that was really you know, focused on design from the beginning. And we collected all of the data and we had people, like we had the founders of Dribbble ready to come and do like a thing at, at Techstars Boston. And then they were like, mm, you know, this stuff really isn't that important. So that really sucked. And this was right around the time my company was failing, so good times. And I decided that instead of showing this to like 13 people, I was going to show it to like a couple hundred thousand people. So I made this website, put it up, and I was just kind of blown away at the reception. Um, if you're interested in the stuff that I've been talking about tonight, there's way more of it on here. Uh, the, the 10 principles of good design are definitely on there. Um, and if you're looking to acquire design talent and like, you don't really know how to assess what good design is, um, this is a really great resource. I've compiled a lot of stuff that is just like the laws of design. And it's really helpful. I go back to it sometimes, like that, so what is good design thing? Like I look at that every couple of weeks, just in case I forget. Um, it's just, it was really fun to make and definitely check it out if you're looking for anything related to like product design. So that's, that's pretty much it, thanks guys. I want lots of questions, so raise your hands. Even if the question is kind of silly. I like silly questions. What's up? Did, did you make that startup, this is how design works, before you got your job? Or? Yes. Really great resume builder. <laughs> hmm? Oh, he asked, um, did I make startups, this is how design works, before I got my job at Kickstand? I guess I should probably do that, like that question thing. What's up? Is it at all possible to outsource design? Um, so it depends. Um, it depends on the stage that your company is at. I feel uh, if you're really early stage and maybe you're looking to like just make something like a minimum viable product or trying to appeal to investors, you have to be really careful outsourcing design because the problem you run into is that you don't have nearly enough money to hire someone really good and the person you do hire doesn't give a shit about you. So they're gonna design something that they think makes sense. They're not gonna assess the problem. They're not gonna feel like they're married to it. They're not gonna own it. And again, like once they're done, they'll be done. And if you get a new designer or if you get a new contractor, um, they might wanna start over because they don't like that solution that that person made. And it's probably a pretty founded uh, assertion that like it's probably not very good. Um, if you can afford someone really expensive, and by expensive I mean good, the, tip, the good people are never cheap, um, find someone who works with startups. Find someone who maybe would come on after you get your initial round of funding. Because those are the people that are gonna care about your product and they're gonna care about what you're doing and they're gonna understand what a startup is and they're gonna help you get to where you need to be. You Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. So how do I talk to people who don't value design? Um, I hate talking to people who don't value design. <laughs> um, that's, why I made, uh, that's why I made this, no, sorry, not that, this. Um, because a lot of startups I talk to, um, I hate to keep hating on Boston, but a lot of the startups I was talking to in Boston didn't care about design. They didn't think it was important. It was an extra, it was what you do after you get your seed round. And it's so hard to talk to those people because 
they don't realize that design isn't just the veneer that goes like, like this is designed, it's not because I use that font or because I use that color or because I put those little circles there. That's not design, that's aesthetic. Um, this thing was designed to inform. This thing was designed to convince people of something. And those are things that you can't really see, they're just things that you experience. And if you can't convince someone of that, then it sucks for them. But uh, it's really nice when you talk to someone who doesn't value design and maybe is a little bit like confrontational about it, like, oh, well, Craigslist or, oh, Reddit isn't designed. Um, like, you have to think about the audience. Like, the audience for, for Reddit isn't exactly like my parents. It's not the general public. And it doesn't really need to be designed. It's, just, it's only content. They try to focus on the content. Uh, like Heroku, like it's command line. As a designer, command, or Heroku is really tough to learn. Um, but for people who don't value design, it's just, I hate to call them ignorant, but maybe they just don't understand what value design is and how much it permeates everything you do. I think you had a question before. Um, first of all, getting feedback from my team is awesome because they're all engineers and I've kind of had to indoctrinate them into the design stuff. Like I did a dry run of this with them and just the fact that they can give me feedback period is like a huge accomplishment because usually when, when an engineer looks at what, the stuff I do, they're like, oh yeah, that's good. Or like, oh, I don't like that color. But when they can give me honest feedback on what I'm doing, um, it's awesome because usually they're right. Um, since I'm the only designer, um, I find myself just kind of getting into a zone and spending like five hours making something, and then I kind of have to step out of that zone and be like, okay, so I have to go back and look at this later and make sure I'm not crazy, but being able to show it to the other people on my team who are all really like super smart people that understand the product, are committed to it, own it, everything, uh, to get feedback from them, if they say something is off or they say something doesn't work, usually they're right and I usually just listen to them. and. Uh, for the engineers, like how many of you guys like throwing away code? No, yes, okay, awesome. Um, it's really hard to throw away code sometimes. And for designers, it's equally hard to throw away a design. Like if you work on something for an hour, you kind of like, you like it, you think it's good, you don't wanna throw it away. Um, but if I can get over that personally, then the feedback I get is always super valuable. Um, also really hard to do, uh, like self-design is something that um, I think everybody kind of does that for themselves, like if you've ever moved furniture around in your house or if you like have your toothbrush a certain way on your, uh, your counter, um, that's designed for yourself, you're not designing for somebody else. And as like a visual designer or as a UI designer, um, it's really hard to just guess what somebody else wants. And fortunately, I can just call my mom and say, hey, mommy, just this, like, can you do, do what that means? And you just say, oh, that's very nice, honey. But sometimes I can get her to talk critically and give me feedback on it. But I think specifically designing for your parents is an interesting thing because you know your parents. And like, you know like, their history. And like, my parents, they're non-technical. Uh, my parents have never had a job where you use a computer. Like my dad is like a painting contractor and my mom uh, was a, like a hairstylist. So they didn't use computers. And I bought my dad a computer because I'm like, Dad, you have to learn how to do this. Like FaceTime me sometimes, like I'm far away. And I understand like the way that they think about computers, which is they don't. So it helps me to uh, think about it in that way and think like, okay, so what is the like complete physical analog of this so that when someone sees this, they know what it means? And it totally informs the way that I'm designing the, the new Kicksend. And uh, I guess when you're designing for other people, um, some people do case studies, some people do uh, personas. Uh, try to figure out like who that person is or what their capabilities are or what their motivations are. And if you can think about those and not about yourself, um, it really helps you like, get through that design process, whether you're sketching or prototyping. We have uh, time for one more. One more. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you're not a designer, but you're a 
mentioned that in three months of time, you sort of went from, oh, I love this app, to I hate it, I want to iterate, right? So can you sort of walk us through some of what's informed that, um, that iteration, if you will, of, you know, based on user feedback, or what, what is it that has made you come from love to, oh, you know, this needs to be iterated at this point? OK, so the question is, how did I go from creating Kicksend uh, in my first like week of being there to like kind of hating it to now doing something new. Um, we do a lot of user testing. Um, like there's a Starbucks across the street from our office and I just go over there with like 25 bucks in $5 Starbucks cards and just say like, does this make any sense to you? And they say no and then I give them the money and I leave. <laughs> really awesome user testing. Um, and uh, we also do a lot of internal stuff uh, like I said, I talk to my mommy, and she tells me if I'm doing stuff that makes sense. Um, I also grew a better understanding of the product, and I think through that process, I was very vocal about it, and everybody kind of learned more about the product. Uh, that's why we're totally redoing it, basically, from a user interface perspective, because we realized that we're doing things the wrong way, uh, that we're not speaking to the right audience, and. Uh, the company has grown a lot, so the, the audience has kind of changed, and we need to change the product to reflect that. Um, so through all of that, through just like constant uh, sketching, uh, talking to other designers actually, uh, just like grabbing coffee or going to Dribbble meetups, um, even looking at Dribbble or looking at like TED Talks and seeing what other people are thinking about or what they're doing, um, it really informs the way I think about the product, uh, not even from like an aesthetic level, but from like a like, how does this thing work? And like, what are we trying to accomplish here? So all of those things combined made me hate what I did because I realized it wasn't at all informed by those things. It was just informed by this is what the product was, this is what we should do in the next four days so that we can get it in the app store and then everything from there. And if you guys have any other questions, I'm going to be like hanging around. So please don't be shy. Just come talk to me. Awesome. Thank you, Wells. Thank you. Cool. Um, so let's see. Uh, next up, we have uh, the shout out segment. Um, before we do that, I just want to introduce the speaker for uh, next month. So this is on September 13th, Thursday, in a couple of weeks. Uh, Michael Ernst is uh, the first designer at Yelp. He actually designed a lot of the things that you see around, including the Yelp icon and things like that. Um, he's a really good friend of mine, uh, college roommate, um, and he's got some really interesting things to say about uh, his, <clears throat> his journey and his sort of uh, career as a visual designer. So please uh, come back for that. It's going to be great. So shout outs. Um, so basically the deal is uh, just line up over here. I'll give you one of these microphones for 15 seconds, and um, you can say something that you want to network about. Um, so go ahead and come on over. I'll just give uh, one quick shout out myself. Um, we of the uh, designers and geeks community have been known to wander over to uh, local edition after the uh, the session here at Yelp ends, uh, which is a really cool little speakeasy on third and market. So uh, if you're interested in more networking, it's not particularly organized, but please uh, come and come and join us there. I'll probably head over there for for a little bit after this. So. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, and I lead a team of developers called CodeQuest, and. If you need a developer or need development help, uh, we are a team that really understands design and we see it as a value add to the product and essential to the product as opposed to an afterthought. Uh, come talk to me. Uh, we're looking for great projects and great people to work with. Thanks. Hey, I'm with a uh, startup called Plum Fair. We are venture backed and using technology that was just released sort of three weeks ago. So if uh, there's any great iOS developers that are interested in understanding the payment world and food better, um, come find me afterwards. We're looking for a great iOS person to join our team. Thanks. Hi, my name is Maria, and I'm a product manager and front-end developer working on several projects that involve mapping and visualizing human relationships to help you connect better with people that could be finding collaborators, finding domain experts, finding opportune moments to re-engage people. And I'm looking for collaborators who are interested in working on it with me. You don't have to be a designer. You could be a developer, a business person, just like really excited about the idea of helping people better connect. 
Hi, I'm Pete Bickford. I am the UX practice lead for Slalom Consulting out here in the city. I'm looking for unstoppable, maybe masochistic user interface designers who <laughs> like bringing really awesome interfaces to probably the worst place in the universe, which is business, uh, business systems. And so uh, if you guys are interested in really good challenges and taking part in really hard problems, come look me up. Uh, Pete Bickford, Slalom Consulting. Cheers. Hello, everybody. My name is Kathleen. I'm an artist and designer, and I'm looking for a job. And if any of you have a job for me, please come to me. Um, I have experience working on um, small development teams, and I was working on games, and I've done it all. I did UI, character design, uh, flash animation, motion graphics, 2D, 3D, you name it. I've probably done it. So yeah, come to me if you have something to, to say to me. <laughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Lane Three. Um, I'm the creative director at my uh, visual design media company called Lane Three Design. Um, I love connecting with designers, but tonight I'm actually more interested in talking to some geeks, and uh, would love to reach out to developers that are looking to partner with an awesome design firm and uh, partner up and come up with some great projects. So if that is you, come find me and uh, we'll talk. Thanks. Hi, my name is Krista. I own a, a branding design firm down on the peninsula, and uh, we're looking for uh, design web, the front end and the back end, but we'd love to have one man for the job. So if you're a front end and back end designer, um, that's what we're looking for. So Krista, personify. Um, thanks so much. Bye. Hi, guys. I'm Zach Taylor. I uh, work at General Assembly. Uh, we're a New York-based um, global network of campuses. Uh, we offer community space and classes on entrepreneurship, technology, and design. Uh, recently launched in San Francisco, and we're offering classes here on those subjects. So if you want to come check us out at General Assembly or talk to me, happy to share more. Um, hi, my name is Eric. Um, I recently left my uh, cushy corporate job from the last acquisition to start a new company. And uh, I really want to talk to anyone here who is, who is an entrepreneurial designer, just like uh, we talked about earlier about um, you know, getting, a, getting a designer really early uh, as a founder. So anyone who's interested, please talk to me. Hi, my name is Nathan. I'm starting a startup called Founder Suite, that it's a a uh, set of online tools for startup founders. It's pretty interesting stuff. And it's definitely got design built into the DNA of the company. It's taking some uh, operational and financial tools used by startups and, and making it elegant for startup founders to use. So looking for contract designers, uh, possibly with some opportunity to join a founding team, um, Nathan at foundersuite.com. Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Rajesh. Um, I'm at a startup which is uh, trying to build a uh, visual theory for application development, if that makes sense. Uh, we're an artificial intelligence company. Uh, we're not looking for any employees or partners, but uh, we are very close to helping our first tranche of users to release their own products. And we are recruiting people who already have ideas but have trouble with technology. So if you have a design and a, a well-defined market, we're looking for people to kind of co-develop their applications with us. Uh, no charge, but we don't sign NDAs, but we don't want to compete against you anyway. So talk to me. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm working um, on a very early stage healthcare startup, and we're looking for an awesome front-end designer to help us out. So if you're interested in revolutionizing healthcare technology, come find me back there by the pool table. Hello, uh, my name is Dan Lynch. Um, my goal is to revolutionize software design. Um, I started out probably 15 years old. I designed a house that uh, now a family lives in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, AutoCAD 10. Uh, studied graphic design, interactive media, and now I have a degree from, uh, in EECS uh, from UC Berkeley. So full spectrum, uh, now starting a company. Uh, if you're interested, I'm talking to Designers, engineers, everybody. Um, so please talk to me. Okay. Right on. Hey guys, I'm Christina. I'm from Unoodle. We're an online network of entrepreneurs, and we are in the midst of 
redesigning our entire interface. And so you will be able to look at our global network and filter it to find all the coders in San Francisco, all the builders, all of the designers. And you can look at it by industry as well as their next step. So you can determine which ones are looking for the right project, which ones are looking for a co-founder, which ones are building a product, selling a product, or raising money, hiring talent. So check us out in the next week, unil.com. We will be totally revamping everything you know about us already. So come talk to me if you want to learn more. Thanks. Cool. And uh, just one quick word from our Karmic sponsor. Please uh, help us keep you up clean. Um, appreciate it if you just throw the trash in the bins and stuff. So anyway, we have the, uh, the space for another, um, I think, another half hour or so. So have a great time. Thanks for coming out.